Hey, how you doing? Thanks for downloading the show. Welcome to Garden Fork Radio. This is me, your host, Eric. I have this DIY podcast and also a companion YouTube channel. Today, I'm here with my friend, Nicole, and Nicole's going to help me have some systems for work and stuff to be basically more to have my act together. Is that right, Nicole? You have your act together. <laughs> That's my definition already. But maybe we could just help around the edges. All right. So what? let's give them, you want to give them the background about why you messaged me and said, hey, w- let's talk about this on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I, I would say I'm a, a midterm supporter of Eric's Patreon. I highly recommend everybody supporting it because you get really cute dog photos <clears throat> and other information. So uh, a, a couple of times Eric has told us that he hasn't posted his videos or he hasn't posted a podcast because he's lost the data. He's lost his things. So I was like, well, I'm a photographer. Maybe I can help Eric with some systems to make sure that doesn't happen. And that's perfect because I I shoot on a camcorder and a GoPro and a, my main phone. And I have some older iPhones that I use. And I'm not very good at assembling all the footage together. And I'm doing the canoe video. And I'm doing a video about making drop donuts in a cast iron pan for Wanda. And I lost footage on both projects. And I'm like, why Why does that happen? <laughs> it is really frustrating. I mean, it, it, it drives me insane. And so the first thing, my first comment is that present Eric has to think about future Eric. (laughs) Because what happens with me is I'll go, I'll do a photo shoot and then I'll come home and I'll be like, "Um, I'm exhausted. Like I'll deal with the photos later. And then I try to remember future Nicole who gets really mad when she loses pictures. (laughs) And I'm like, you know what? I don't care how tired you are. You need to go up to the computer and you need to download them and back them up. Well, also people have paid me for these, right? Um, these are like their family memories. Um, so I, I, you know, that's my first systems management tool is that I force myself to think about future Nicole. Wow. Yeah. I think after this, I might just have that in my brain. I'm like, oh, I don't want to mess this up. (laughs) Be stuck again. (laughs) Well, and, but I think that you already have this innate ability, right? Because you, we talked about your exercising setup, right? Like you have it on autopilot. And that's kind of what I mean by a system. It's like, it's just something that you do because that's what you do, right? I go download the photos because that's what I do, right? Yes. Um, I do have some, okay. So I'll, let me explain how I do my photo backup. Um, I don't know if it'll be helpful, but I'll, I'll tell you anyway. Sure. Um, okay. So the first is I get home. Well, the first thing I do is all of my SD cards are numbered and I just use a Sharpie on the back of them so that I know I can differentiate between them. Right. Um, And then I never erase what's on an SD card until I have delivered the photos to the client. Um, All right. Well, for everyone listening, an SD card is the memory card that goes into a camera and that's where all the photos or videos are stored. Right, right. Now, my camera does have the ability to use Wi-Fi to instantly back them up when I get home, but I find that that, that drains the battery and that, that system doesn't work for me. So I, I don't use that. So the cards are numbered. So I get home, I upload them immediately to my computer. And then as soon as they're uploaded, I do the redundancy, which, which you were talking about. So I put them on my external hard drive, right? And then when I edit them, the edited photos are put in the cloud for my clients to receive. And then I move those edited photos to the file folder that I have on my external hard drive. So on the external hard drive, I have the photos. I have a a backup external hard drive that I regularly just copy everything on my external hard drive to. Mm -hmm. So I have two. And then I I was trying to think, oh, and I have two different ways. So my iPhone photos are a different system than my work photos, if you will. But I also think that it's, you know, I want to have those backed up too. And so those I have backed up 
Oh, I remember what I was about to say. I'm sorry. I'm scattered today, guys. Sorry. <laughs> I on the iCloud. So I have them in iCloud as well as on the external hard drives because I what's that called? Memory Palace? No. What's it called on Apple? Um, oh, I don't know, but it's it's their it's their cloud backup. Yeah, they're 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 automatic backup. And I have actually used that before where I've like lost photos and gone back and they were all right there in the what's it called? It'll come to me while we talk. Okay. Okay. So switching but over it's, to it's, the it's for minimal cost. If you have a if you have an app any kind of Apple product, you can uh store stuff in your personal cloud on their servers and it's well it does it in the background and it keeps you from it doesn't have to be photos. It could be a PowerPoint presentation. You right. Know, you, it does everything. It backs up. Yeah. You tell it what you want to back up and it's just peace of mind. Right. Um, and it's very secure. I, I haven't heard of too many of them being hacked. So. So um, I'll talk about the iPhones in a minute. But the other important thing about how you're uploading your photos is the file management system that you have in place. So I always store my photos in the photo in a, in a file that's called photo. And I f organize those within that file by year. And then every person's photo shoot is a dated and named. And I do headshots, um, mini sessions and photo sessions. So they either have a PS for a photo session, HS, for headshot or MS for a mini session, which also helps me categorize the photos or the photo shoots later on. Um, and I use the dating system. Years ago, I read an article about a Japanese filing system that's fabulous. And because the, uh, this won't surprise anybody, anything that's too complicated, I just won't do. <laughs> <laughs> so this has you file everything in your physical folders by date. And so you don't, you don't put them into different groups necessarily. Like any receipt you get, you just put the next one closest to the front because most people remember when they did something or can figure that out. And then you can figure out where it is in that, in that chunk, if that makes sense. Yeah, Totally. So I do the same thing for my clothes. Like we went through the KonMari phase a couple of years ago. And so I use her folding method in my, in my drawer, but I always put the clothes that I most recently wore on the far right. And then eventually you can see that the clothes that you're not wearing are over there on the far left. And those can go live with somebody else. <laughs> oh, wow. Right. So same in the closet, you put the stuff you've actually worn the most, you hang it up on the far right. So then the stuff that gets over on the left, which is like my wedding dress, <laughs> you know, you have, you're not wearing <laughs> my suit. Like I haven't worn a suit in a decade. Um, so that could go live with somebody else. Okay. So that, 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 but that is the same idea behind how I do my folder organization in my computer. Wow. Do you also name uh, cause you can do this in a batch mode, at least on a Mac, you can each individual photo. Cause when they come out of the camera, they just have a series of numbers. And then it says, you know, dot IMG or dot JPEG or whatever. I, my, I use Lightroom to mm -hmm. edit my photos and to import them. And, um, it has a setting in the import screen where you can say number it sequentially or give, you know, you have a couple options and I just have them numbered sequentially. Okay. Is that okay? Okay. Do you have any questions about that system? No, I like that you have it backed up in a couple places. Oh yeah, because that's the like worst feeling in your stomach when you can't find it and somebody's paid you. <laughs> or your hard drive's making a squealing noise. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. No, that's well. And I lost my last MacBook Pro to an a Lego. <laughs> No, it was bad. It was my poor, my poor son. He just closed the screen, and there was a Lego there, and you know, um, yeah. Oh, it cracked the screen. It cracked the screen, and it was an old MacBook Pro, right? But it still worked fine. It wasn't. <laughs> it didn't matter to me that it was like you know ten years old, and um, 
so the kid was so upset. He felt so bad. And then re- my brother was like, oh, I can, I can replace this screen. But then we watched a couple of videos online and I was like, I think this is beyond you. Uh. <laughs> he's going to listen to this and give me a hard time. I mean, he can do iPad screens, so he's pretty, he's pretty solid. He's two steps ahead of me. So oh God, I know. Anyway, so the point of the matter is, yeah, um, you're right. Things can break. Compute coffee spills, like life happens. Back up. Hey, have you signed up for Masterclass yet? Well, come on, let's go. If you're tired of like, oh, what are we going to watch tonight? And you're trying to find something maybe on PBS or a documentary. Why don't you check out Masterclass? It's it's like curated high-end YouTube from people that are living. You know, on YouTube, there's like these uh, experts and you're like, well, how do you... They're like, this is the way to do it. And you're like, okay. And they're like, oh, I've done this, this, and this. But you have they really? So the people on Masterclass, well, you know them and they have. That's pretty good, right? I didn't write that. I just did that right off the top of my head. Pretty good. Anyway, um, yeah, obviously we do get an affiliate uh, finder's fee from you signing up for Masterclass. But I genuinely like Masterclass. Uh, we were actually talking about this in the after show, but I get inundated with stuff to feature in the podcast and the videos. And if I don't believe in it, I won't do it, you know? So, um, I like this. I like masterclass. If you want to use the link we have really appreciate that helps pay the bills here. All right, let's go back to the show. Yeah. The other thing, um, I just had a friend of the show who will be on. I don't know if they want to be named yet, but they have a, it's called a network connected drive. I think it's, it's like Apple used to call it a media server or a a shared any, it's a standalone hard drive that is connected to your home Wi-Fi. If you have one of those, make sure the firmware is updated because there has been some hacking going on of these, uh, individual hard drives that are just connected to your Wi-Fi, they get through your, they get through your Wi-Fi somehow and they attack the drive and they lock it up and you have to pay the evil hackers in Bitcoin to get them to unlock all the photos of your kids. A so, ransomware attack. This is horrible. Yeah. So it's, it's going on. So make sure uh, all your firmware is updated and perhaps consider not buying uh, that kind of equipment from, not a leading maker of stuff like that, I would think. Uh, well, I mean, I'll tell you the the firmware thing. My mouse stopped working, and I have a an expensive mouse that's a gaming mouse. Not because I'm a gamer, but because I use the buttons to. I have the buttons program to make editing the photos easy, and it it stopped working. I was really frustrated with it. Uh, it's a Razer Naga. I love it. You you could link to it. Um, okay. Because it's a great it's a great mouse. Um stopped working. I was really frustrating. I even ordered a new one. And then I realized I needed to update the firmware and now it's fine. (laughs) Yeah. I'm I'm trying to update the firmware in my drone and it's, it's quite difficult. Oh, really? (laughs) Yeah. Well, drones aren't really good at at about talking to you. They beep a lot and the lights flash and stuff. So uh, I'm told if I have a brand new SD card with the update on it, it works much better. I don't know. I guess SD cards start to get some bad, the data gets a little gar- garbled, even though if you reformat it and all that. So who knew? Well, that's definitely a good point is that your uh, you, these SD cards have a lifespan and they will, I mean, I'm sure Rick could tell us all about it, but uh, they will die. So you do need to, I know for most photographers, just buy a new set of them at the, you know, it's a sunk cost. You've got to buy them at the beginning of the season. And it's brilliant that you label them. I uh, Mine are not labeled. <laughs> I do have a little waterproof uh, case. It's about mm-hmm. the size of my hand. Well, when you put your two hands together because it splits open. And I keep all my SD cards in there. So at least they're all in one place. So do I get points for that? You definitely get points for that. But I know you have a Sharpie. So yeah. just Sharpie that up. Um, they're black. So you'll need like a 
a gold Sharpie or a silver Sharpie or a white Sharpie. <laughs> I have a silver one. I like it. I used it to, uh, I did the Casey Neistat thing with my knapsack. I wrote my name and phone number all over the thing. And, um, and then I tied, my father taught me this. I tied green ribbon to like four different places of the knapsack and I take a picture of it. And so if I ever get lost, it gets lost in the airport. It has my phone number on it in the silver Sharpie there. Well, um, this is another tangent, but I'm going to go down it. The, okay. the Apple air tags. So one of my friends the other night, uh, forgot the dog in the car. Not long, not long. She ran out and got him, forgot to lock the car. Can you see where this is going? No. <laughs> Wakes up in the morning. The car has gone. Ooh. So neighbors luckily have the video cameras. We have a program in DC where the city will, you know, supports buying the video cameras. She can see the guy walk up to the car, open the door, get in, and then has a flashlight and he's running around. The car turns on and he drives away. And so I'm talking to her and she's like, yeah, I, I don't know how he started the car. Like, I mean, I was like, I, can you hotwire cars today? I don't know. It was, you know, hot, a Toyota Highlander. And Ooh. And then she's like, well, the only thing I can think is we had the, the glove compartment key in the glove compartment. And I was like, oh, that wasn't a glove compartment key. She's like, no, when we bought the car, the dealer said that the glove compartment key is in the glove compartment. We just left it there. <laughs> and I was like, no, that that was actually the valet key. Right. So he just got in the car was like, thanks. You left it open for me and you left me a key. Thanks. <laughs> She was, oh, she was so mad. I mean, I feel so bad. I feel so bad for her. <laughs> I thought about those Apple air tags because you can um, they're about the size of a quarter. They're about the the thickness of a nickel or two. You know, it's not very thick and you can put them on things and it uses whatever Bluetooth is available to ping back to the owner of the air tag, you know, to your phone. Right. To tell you where it is. And you could stick one of those on your car, probably. Well, and on your bike, quite frankly. That's well, I was long. just going to bring up because I do have a, I have an e-bike now, which is the most expensive thing I've ever bought. And, um, and I'm thinking I should put an air tag on there, you know, just so, in a nondescript place. For years, we've had the tile. That's a different company, um, a smaller company. <clears throat> and the tiles work, work well. I won't say they work great. They work well because you have to have somebody nearby who pings it and, um, we have recovered some bikes with a tile in DC. Now I bought the newest tiles because they have one that's like the shape of a credit card and to put in your wallet, right? If you lose your wallet, yeah. you can ping your wallet. But the hack that I saw was putting it on the back of your Nintendo switch, because let's say your child loses the Nintendo switch in your house and that sends you down a path of cleaning your entire house and sort yes. of the Nintendo switch and you still don't find it. <laughs> You're pretty angry. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a, a new system we have in place after we found the Nintendo switch underneath the bed between the mattress and the, the lat lattices or whatever those are called. Those wooden oh, things. Oh, the lath goes across. Yeah. Yeah. That's where we found it. <laughs> wow. We never would have found that if we hadn't bought a new mattress. <laughs> so but the, the camera operator has a uh, Apple watch. Yes. And so she used to lose her. Well, she still does misplace her phone in the apartment a lot. And now she just presses a button on the Apple Watch and the phone beeps and, and, and vibrates. It's the best. I love that's like the best use case for the Apple Watch. <laughs> it solves uh, it. It lowers the stress level in the morning. And so you can get the tiles and put them on your keychain, which is another thing that goes missing quite frequently. Um, now we have a system for our keys where we have a hook right at the front door and we have trained ourselves. So that, that is a non-issue for us now. That's a good system we have. So you, when you come in the door, you put your keys on the hook. Right there. Mm -hmm. And, there's and then when you leave, when you leave the house, you put the key back in your pocket or. Yeah. We just carry, you know, just because the, the, the new electric car, you know, it doesn't actually have a key. It has that fob thing. Right. Which I find very frustrating. I prefer a key. Um, but, you know, the Highlander that we have is really old and it does have a key. So you have to have a key. I but, have a I have a 10 year old Highlander as well. 
Oh, I love that. I love it. Mine's a 2006. Um, well, you should look around in your Highlander for the valet key because it could be in there. That's interesting. Huh. Um, but yeah, the hanging of the keys, right. That's another KonMari thing, right? She says you should, well, she wants you to empty your purse out and, and say thank you to your purse and put your purse away every day. I'm not doing that, but I do make sure I put the keys. I hang the keys up because that I don't like that. Okay. So then I just wanted to quickly say what I do for my iPhone backing up. Yes. So I have the iPhone, I have the iCloud, which theoretically is always backing it up. But I also use, um, if you have Amazon Prime, you get Amazon Photo. It's included. Mm -hmm. And it's a similar thing where it automatically saves the photos to Amazon Photo. So then that gives you some redundancy. Not that iCloud's going anywhere, hopefully. But, you know, that's the thought. That's all great. And, of course, me being uh, the right-brained uh, unorganized person that I am, I, when I'm presented with this multi-step process, I, I immediately are like, oh, I'm going to get overwhelmed by that. But what I could, what you, if you're feeling like I am, what you could apply to this is what, um, my friends at food blogger pro call their tiny steps. They, mm -hmm. they made their name, their company there. It's called a little bit, meaning a little bit every day, uh, much like the, uh, and they also talk about that 1% to infinity. So if you do 1% every day after a hundred days, you're at a hundred percent of a project or something. So you could, you could start this in steps rather than this. It, to me, it, it it's a multi-step process. So maybe you could start doing step one, maybe in step two and then work up to it. And, right. And Just God number forbid, your make a photos, list. You know, number your cards the first day. And then um, I do think there's something to, once you have your system to like, your fealty to your system, just like do the system, whatever the system is, just do the system. Well, we were talking about, I said, oh, I'm going to talk to Nicole about systems. And I'm like, and I I just, as soon as I hear that word, I'm like, oh, and then I realize I actually do have systems in my life. Um, I make the camera operator breakfast every morning Aww. and it's on, I, it's an autopilot thing now. And it's, um, what's that phrase you call it? The something causing action. Event action on? forcing event. Right. So I don't know if it's one of those, but it's basically, well, the camera butter needs to eat. And I'm like, oh yeah, I got to make her breakfast. And now it's just, I just, as soon as we get back from walking the dogs, I start making her breakfast. So it's interesting how that, that task becomes a habit, which, because I guess what I'm trying to say is because it's an external need. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but if, if I, if I have to do something for my, someone else, I'm much more likely to do it than I am doing it for myself. Well, but then maybe that's where thinking about future Eric comes into play. Yes. Yes. Where I'm sitting, where I'm sitting here in the late afternoon and I'm like, oh, I can't find that media file. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I want it. a GoPro. <laughs> I don't want anybody to think that I have my act together, right? Like we have a lot of system fails. So we've trained the children how to do the laundry. So they're very good wow. at washing it and drying it. But this is our system fails because they take the laundry out of the dryer and then we have a piling system where we pile the laundry at the end of our bed and then mine for clothing uh. until the day before the cleaning lady is coming. And then we frantically, as a family, fold every piece of clothing that we own. <laughs> <laughs> it's the way my mother-in-law does is she just folds the clothes right when they come out of the dryer. That's what I do. Yeah, that's a better system. And I, I listen to a podcast or I watch YouTube videos while I do it. And that's actually, I kind of like it because I get to watch whatever I want on the iPad in the basement, you know? So, and I, folding takes a while because when you have Labradors, there's, there's Labrador hair all over your clothing, even when it comes out of the dryer. So <laughs> what's that roller thing? The lint roller? Oh, you do the lint roller every, oh, wow. You're committed. Not to my clothes, but to the camera operator's clothes. Cause she's got a 
she's that big executive, you know, she's got right, a, right. can't look like she just rolled out of bed like me. <laughs> um, Okay, well, oh, I just should say just quickly that my brother does work at Amazon Photo, but I am not saying that's, I'm not saying I like it because of him, but just full disclosure. It, it's much like the, the, the Apple iCloud thing. It's just fine that what you have to be careful of is it's, I think that's good as a backup, but once you hit a certain gigabyte, they start charging you for the extra storage yeah. and that can add up. No, what that's I great. what I have here at the Garden Fork Central for my video files is I have I call it a toaster. It's a it's a dock style drive unit. So I take bare hard drives, like internal hard drives that are in mm -hmm. a rack or something. I buy them, and you just pop them into the top of this plastic looking box. It's about the size of. Um, I don't know, a small banana bread cake or something. And it okay. has two slots and the, the, it receives the drive and it energizes it and it connects it to a USB. So I, I pull all the video when I'm editing, the video sits on this external drive. It never, the, my media files are never on my, my big computer. And then every week or so there's a clone button on this dual dock drive. I'll link to this thing I have. And I set it up overnight where I have a backup, a backup hard drive for every media drive. And I just hit the clone button and I, it backs up the entire contents of the drive to a second hard physical hard drive. So if one of them fails, I have the other one. And then in the longer range with the older hard drives, I take the backup and I take it in another building. So if there were ever a fire, um, I have a backup somewhere else. So where do you think your system breaks down? Is it the going up north? Yeah, and it's I shoot it and then I don't edit it right away. Like this podcast, I'll edit it right away so I don't forget it, forget to do it. But with the the media, I'll shoot I'll usually shoot a video on the weekend and then on a Monday when I sit down to my desk, I forgot I sometimes forget what video I shot when. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I like I I shot a video about pruning my apple tree because I always do it in the middle of winter. And um, you're going to love this, but I can't find the footage. Well, OK, <laughs> so what if you put notes to yourself? I mean, do you use Google Calendar or Apple Calendar? Or? No, I use the, the reminder function on the Apple phone. Because I'm wondering <laughs> or if you could just open notes and when you make a video, just type down the date. And what you did. So like 126 tree prune. I could put that in the calendar because I would see it. Yeah. See, I, I put that all in the, yeah, I, we put all kinds of stuff in our calendar like that. All right. That's my one step. That's my tiny okay. step. That's your tiny step. That's good. I like it. What camera did I shoot? I can't remember what camera I shot the, I shot, you know, it's amazing what you can shoot on an iPhone these days. <laughs> So, oh, oh my gosh, that's the truth. I should hold videos with it. I, 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 I'm thinking about getting a, a camera that shoots in 4K, like a mirrorless camera. And I'm like, do I really need one? What if I just bought a, an Apple, what is it? Apple 13, 13. or whatever. Yeah. Which is a cinema rated phone. Well, you know. It's funny you say that because so both of my cameras, um, will do the. I don't know if it's 4K, but they'll do the digital. I think it is. Digital video. Yeah. The mirrorless camera. And I shot a, I had to shoot a video of myself last year and I, you know, got off the tripod tripod and, and did it all. And it looked really good. Yeah. I mean, I was kind of astounded at how good it looked. It's amazing. It, it's so um, I'm, I'm looking at, I need a smaller digital video camera of some sort. So the camera operator can handle it and it's easy. It's not like a big clunky, you know, videographer kind of camera. And I'm thinking about a, a little mirrorless one or just getting an iPhone and they make little brackets for them. So they're a little easier to hold. Yeah. And now they make lenses for them that you can like attach to them. Yep. Well, you know, um, pro tip, maybe you could just go rent a 
or one of the smaller cameras from B&H for a weekend or something. Oh, that's a good idea. Just to try it out, see what you thought of it. See if there's a use case for it. Yeah, it's always fun to go to B&H Photo. I don't know if you guys have ever been to the B&H Photo in Manhattan, but it is uh, quite the spectacle. <laughs> Ugh, it's amazing. The um, the when you want to buy something, you don't walk over to the to the cash register with it. Uh, if you're talking to a salesperson, they put it into a I think it's a green plastic tub, and they put it underneath the counter, and you hear this chunk chunk, and all of a sudden it either goes up or down onto this conveyor belt system that looks like something that would move luggage, but it's moving your your new tripod or your new camera, or whatever. And it goes all around. It's like Willy Wonka. It goes all around the store and then it ends up on the other side of the cash register. <laughs> so they make you pay first. <laughs> Smart. All right. It's the second intermission of the show. And you know what I'm going to talk about. Cup of coffee a month for Garden Fork, right? You want to see a little bit of behind the scenes, kind of peek behind Eric's world. Like, oh, why'd I do that dumb thing? I think I posted three or four things today, not today, this week. I mean, I'm literally, I'm doing some, like I got my quad stuck in the snow. And so I took some pictures of the quad and I talked about, this is why you have a winch on the front of your quad. And I'll tell you the, re the reason is because when you get it stuck somewhere, you can pull it out. It's You just wrap around a tree stump and yank the puppy out of there. And that's why, but I took some pictures and said, hey, this is a, this is what I was doing. I had a trailer full of uh, firewood and I was trying to blow through some snow. And then there's pictures of the dogs and um, coming soon will be uh, another uh, live Zoom call with, uh, with the patrons. I've been doing YouTube live streams with the big crowd with, and then um, the kind of, it's a little bit more intimate and I'm gonna work on scheduling that with the patrons, but anyway, if you want to throw a cup of coffee a month, patreon.com slash garden fork. There is a link in the show notes there. All right, back to the show. Okay, there's one other thing I wanted to say about the backing up sure. to the cloud is um, apparently the cloud backup system uses a lot of water. And so I've actually started pondering whether I should be backing up as much as I do to the cloud for environmental reasons. So we're talking about it, it uses a lot of water to cool those servers, which are sitting servers. in Oregon or Oregon or Utah or something like that. Right. I, I know, didn't think about that. It's it's definitely a real issue. I uh, My nephew sent me a, a YouTube video actually about it. And so then, you know, I was like, well, let's verify, trust, but verify. <laughs> and so it is a real issue. And I don't know what the solution is. Interesting. I didn't, th I didn't think about that. Well, we'll have to do a follow-up on that. Yeah. 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 Huh? Well, cool. I love this where, uh, Nicole, you just email me and go, Hey, what about this topic? And I just go, yeah, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's not a lot of gardening, but no, that's fine. I think, I think maybe in, uh, Everyone that's listening, are, they're kind of the wheels are turning because I'd like to hear from you all. Oh, we got a number of emails about electric car feedback. And most people said it doesn't cost as much as you think to charge your car overnight. But let's hold all that conversation for another electric car podcast. Okay. I just thought we, we were talking about electric cars a little too much lately. But um, several of the I mean, patrons wrote in and regular listeners. I'm sorry. Any, any new uh, reviews on the uh, old iTunes? Um, I didn't see one. Okay. I'll here. I'll look right now. Here, you have to listen to me. Oh, you can't really hear because because we're using the um, new software, the Squadcast. Thanks to somebody. I don't know who would have told me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's always fun to. Um, I, you know, I, to this, this, I go reviews. We have a, we have 254 five star ratings. That's pretty good. That's impressive. You know? Yeah. And then, um, last one is from Heather. Great content, five stars, an interesting range of topics 
and engaging guests make Eric's podcast both highly entertaining and informative. Nice. Entertaining and informative. I love it. <laughs> it's better than watching paint dry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I should send you this <clears throat> piece of art that Oscar sent me. He made for me that says it's a it's a painting of paint and it says from the time I watched paint dry. Uh, he was trying to telegraph that he was bored and wanted his iPad. Oh. <laughs> All right, Nicole and I are going to stick around for the after show for the patrons, but thank you so much for listening. Um what are your systems? What do you do to be more organized and not lose your video footage? What could I do? <laughs> it's radio at gardenfork.tv. If you want to find out more about Nicole, her links will be in the show notes here. It's Nicole Harkin, H-A-R-K-I-N.com, correct? Well, that's my pictures, but oh. if you want to know about my writing, you can go to NicoleHarkinWriting.com, which is maybe I don't know, more interesting. Garden Fork Radio is produced by Garden Fork Media LLC in Brooklyn, New York. Our producer is Sean O'Neill. If you need an amazing podcast producer, visit Sean's site, seaninbrooklyn.com. That's Sean, S-E-A-N, in brooklyn.com. Our executive producer is Jimmy Goose. For more information about Jimmy and the custom hollow books he makes, visit hollowbooks.com. The music in the show is licensed from audioblocks.com and uniquetracks.com. Mm-hmm.